we started recommender systems using deep neural networks last session, you are going to see different variants of recommender system or recommender system algorithms. And that, and that depends on the type of data that you have. What we are going to be covering uh, in this session on this slide is about session-based type of data. Uh, think of a user that is interacting with a website. Perhaps they are looking for a hotel room and they're going to be clicking on items one after another. So it's going to be a sequence of integers. Each item is going to have its own ID. Therefore, you're going to have a sequence of integers. And this should remind you of natural language, which was also a sequence of integers. And the task is next integer prediction or next item prediction. And that item we're going to recommend to the user. And because it's a next item prediction, and it's a sequence of integers, perhaps you can start with using uh, a simple RNN, like gated recurrent units. Your inputs are gonna be your items. In addition to perhaps a global feature, you can think of this as the bag of items or bag of words, similar to that concept. And then your task is predict and likelihood or associate a likelihood to the next item in the sequence. Then we talked about how you're actually gonna use mini batching here because our GPUs like to process matrices and tensors which have a fixed size. Your sessions are gonna have different sizes and the strategy to batch them is to go session wise. You pick your first session, you put it here except for the last item, because that's the one that you want to predict. And you take the same sequence, shift it to the right. And these are the things that you're going to be predicting. If you have item one, you want to predict item two. If you're at item two, you want to predict item three. But uh, then you go to the next session. It's going to have shorter length of items. And then not to waste uh, computation and memory, because otherwise this is going to be an empty and then your GPUs are not gonna like it. You're gonna see that your GPUs are sometimes 100% busy and sometimes 10% busy if you don't uh, have equally length objects that you're processing. To compensate for that, you take session four, you copy it here, and then you want to predict the second item in session four. Whenever such a thing happens, when you're suddenly changing sessions in your mini batch, you are gonna do some accounting that if such a thing happens, you are gonna reset your hidden state. Any questions about this point? Since we covered last session, this was a quick overview. Was everything clear? Okay, perfect. Now the question is, what is your loss function? And you have multiple choices. You can start with ranking loss. It is based on a Bayesian personalized ranking, BPR. And the idea is that a user should prefer the item i over any other item. You know the ground truth. For instance, here you know your ground truth is this item here. And your user should prefer this item over any other item in your vocabulary of items. So i is a desired item. It is basically your ground truth. During training, you know your ground truth. So you know this item. And these are some negative samples that you sample from your data. You are going to have a vector of scores at a given point in the session Perhaps at this point when you're predicting the fourth item you are debating between multiple choices therefore this is going to end up being a vector vector of scores and you want the score of the ith item so you're picking element i of that vector to be bigger than the jth entries because i is the correct one j's are the incorrect ones. And this is over all of the items. This is over the size of your R. You push it through a sigma, you push it through a log, and that's going to give you your loss function. It's your ranking loss. You want I to be ranked higher than any other item. Alternatively, you can have top one type of loss. This is actually a not differentiable loss function, but to convey the idea, let's see what is going to be the relative rank 
of the relevant item. So item I is going to be the relevant item, but your model is thinking or associating a score to that relative item. And then you count the number of items that are showing up above or have a higher score than the correct item. And then this is going to tell you what is going to be the rank of the ice item because you're going to get one, 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 one. And then there's going to be zeros here. If you add the ones, it's going to give you the actual rank of that item. If nothing is above it, the rank is going to be one. If only one thing is above it, it's having a higher score, the rank is going to be two. So you're adding two of these ones. The rest of them are zero. Now you're normalizing. This is your relative rank. This is not differentiable. You can regularize it and make it differentiable. This one you can use to uh, back propagate. Your sigmoid is supposed to approximate the indicator function, which is going to be one if this is bigger than i and zero otherwise. Sigmoid is going to be one and zero smoothly. And then at the same time, you want the scores of the wrong objects to be penalized. So you want them to go down. So this is a penalty. And then you can optimize over the parameters of your GRUs. In terms of your evaluation metric, these ones we are going to keep using. So it's a good idea to learn about them. The architecture might change, but the way that you're going to do your mini batching is important. And we are going to learn it once for all. Your loss functions are going to be useful. And then the other thing that is universal are the evaluation metrics. What is recall at 20? You ask your model to do its prediction. It's going to associate scores to all of the items. And then you pick the top 20 ones. And then perhaps you're going to recommend them to the user. Okay. And how do you measure if your model is doing the correct thing? If the correct item in your test data, you know the correct item. If the correct item is falling within the top 20 recommendations out of your model, you're going to count that as a correct prediction. Otherwise, it's a negative point for your model. This was for one data point. You are going to do that for all of the test cases, all of the data points. And that's going to give you a recall at 20. It is saying that if you predict or if you recommend 20 items, can you recall the actual ground truth? Is the ground truth one of them? The other one is the mean reciprocal rank. You are going to uh, recommend to the user 20 items. Then you go among those 20 items and see if the ground truth is one of those items. If it is the yes, what is the rank of that? So this one is a little bit more strict than recall. Not only the ground truth should be among the 20, but it should have the highest rank. Okay? These are the evaluation metrics. And then you start evaluating on some data sets, video and RSC recommender system challenge in 2015, you look at top one, that could be your loss. DPR could be your loss or cross entropy could be your loss. And then you can play around with the size of your hidden units. So these are the hidden dimensions of your GRUs. And the larger it is, it is better. According to recall, mean reciprocal rank for two different data sets. And these items in the parentheses are the improvements over a baseline. You're doing, you're having 20% improvement over your baseline. So this is a relative improvement. This is a huge improvement. So the sequential nature of the sessions matter and taking that into account matters. Something like co-occurrence doesn't take that into account, doesn't take the ordering into account. And these are some competing methods before this, for instance, K nearest neighbor, and just to put the numbers in perspective. This is 63, and this is 50. And then the question is, uh, what are the best hyperparameters for different data sets and different loss functions? You can do a grid search on them, and these are going to be the best ones. For instance, a midi-batch size of 50, a dropout of 50%, learning rate, and no momentum is doing the best for this data set and for that particular choice of the loss function. And these are two data sets that I want you guys to explore. And then you're going to get an idea of 
what is session-based recommendation and why recurrent neural networks could be a good model or thinking of your data as a sequence of integers. Any questions about session-based recommendation? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.